I went to sleep. But my heart, my heart carried away with me. The heart is, is one of the most difficult tasks, but fulfilling tasks that we could ever do. To gain the heart of a person is to gain not only their trust and a tribute to faithfulness, it is to gain their vulnerability. For them to be exposed in front of you and not be ashamed of you. I think it's difficult when you are pregnant with purpose but can't give birth to your passion. You shut up in the womb of God calling you to do something, but nobody believes in you enough to, to midwife you through. Talking to somebody today who is impotent in it. You are barren to giving life to what you're called. You've ever been in this place, do you know what it feels like, seems like a loose to to be in a position where God I lay down and I am not fulfilled. You can't seem to think of anything else but what you're called to do, where you're called to be, who you're called to touch, what it is in life that your purpose is. You go to sleep. But your heart stays in You burn inside of you so much so that God, I feel incomplete, broken, unwhole. I see him well on the outside, but every place that I go, if you really look, you can identify with him. My heart doesn't get any sleep. And God shows up and talks to Abraham and reminds him, but nobody focuses on Sarah's in the tent. He's dropping at the door. I know, I know somebody's girlfriend can relate to this, that all you do is eavesdrop at the door. You, you just want a little bit of what God is saying. You, you just want to hear a bit of the conversation. You trying to see, does it include you? Does it, does it direct you? Does it show you something that Abraham hasn't seen? God hasn't spoken to you. Maybe he's spoken to the partner that's connected to you. You, you haven't heard from him. You've been praying, getting no answers been fasting, hearing, seeing, saying no results. You, you've been given a promise and God hasn't delivered. Trying to find out, has he spoken to the spouse? God says something crazy that catches her off guard. He reminds her painfully of the memory of the promise that he made for her and still she hasn't seen it. You ever been so nervous where you get excited, but you feel silly for getting excited, so you laugh at you. Well, you know it's not gonna happen. You, you know it's past too. It's, you beyond that age. You done already hit menopause, and God talking about getting married. You, you go to church and people prophesy stuff to you so outlandish that God, it don't even make sense. It's funny, but it's not funny. It's hilarious how how people can just speak stuff into your life and you know it ain't gonna happen. It's funny how people think you'll fall for just anything because you're in church that you seem saved, but but you ain't stupid. You you know prophecy when you hear it. This this is not this is not the case here. This is God showing up speaking directly and she laughs. Because I done been promised so many things that God hadn't come through on I have to laugh at me for believing God again. This ain't for everybody. This is for those people who can be honest to say, God, you done spoke stuff over my childhood I ain't even seen yet. You, you done gave stuff to my parents in promise form that they haven't even had the balance to cash the check on it yet. You have been making deposits that have come back insufficient. I'm, I'm trying to find out when do I come up on everything that you would promise me. Because my heart hurts. Because you giving me a love that hurts me. You making promises that are void to me. It hurts.
I know that this is the chapter right before God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. This is the chapter where we see seemingly because of the one connected to it, the wrath of God, the anger of God, the place where God doesn't care. But I really beg to differ. I think that this is characteristics of the God that we serve and we love for why it is that we do. I know that she is in a difficult space because she's old. She's past the time where doctors would even try now. Is is she laughs because they laugh at her when she makes the phone call saying, is it possible for me and my husband to still have a child? You can't even tell your friends about it. It's so crazy what God done put inside of you. It's, it's ridiculous how much you want to post about it, but can't because you know people won't accept it. You try telling somebody that that you 50 learning how to drive. Tell, telling somebody that you you 95 going back to get your GED. You, you telling somebody with, with your record, you going to hold that kind of position at, at that job, at that place, that your background won't matter? It's ridiculous. You think you going to be the one to break the family free of the curse of poverty? It's ridiculous that you ain't going to have a baby before you get married. It's ridiculous that you think that man going to be with you. But that's the promise God made to you. So you're going to be the first one to not go to jail. You're going to be the first one to not have a criminal record. You're going to be the first one to not be in a gang. You're going to be the first one to have clean, clear credit. You're going to be the first one. It's ridiculous how people don't believe God to do the impossible in your life. That's, that's where she's at. And I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at how ridiculous these people gonna be when I tell them what you said. He says, why did you laugh? And this is where we find out the character of God. He says, why would you laugh at something I've said? Not what they said I've said, at what I've said to you. Is that you can't forfeit prophecy nowadays. Maybe God couldn't get through to you, so he spoke to somebody closely connected to you. And you can't doubt everything that people deliver to you in portrayal that it comes from God if it is identifying to you. He says, why did you laugh? And she says, I didn't. Because she did it in her head. But God is standing here in person. And you gotta stop doubting in your head what God is showing you in person. You, you've become so stricken by everything you see to be something to be mental that when God shows you the creation of the creation of it is that you doubt it so much so where you don't even go for it because you're seeing it in front of you. Huh? I'm talking about the right one coming along and you begin to self-doubt it so much so that you can't even look at what's standing before you. That your value of you becomes so low, your, your willingness to accept it, to, to hold it, to have it. Just, I didn't like it. And somewhere I think you have to just be honest with yourself. Like maybe I don't believe. Maybe, maybe I'm too scared. Maybe I think I'm too weak. Maybe it's not even the enemy. It's just me. That's stopping me from getting everything that God has promised to me. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it's not all of them. It's me who thinks it's funny that God can still use me. Maybe it's me who makes my heart hurt. Maybe, 
is me that thinks I'm awake and I'm asleep. He says, you did laugh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? And this is where I understand where Solomon is because Abraham is asleep, but his wife is awake with the dream of the fulfillment of what is to come, but cannot conceive. And her heart is awake, and so God has to stop by. I can't hear you today. God, God had to come by her barren place, her broken place, her bruised place, her, her hurt place. God has to come by and identify with her on today that I'm still the God who can do anything. I'm, I'm still the God who can make old people pregnant. I'm still the God who can bring life to a dead place. I'm still the God who remember what I promised yesterday. And regardless of if you doubt it, I'm still going to perform it anyway. I'm still the God who can do the impossible. It says when your heart stays awake, that's when God shows up and becomes personal. Personal with you and lets you know that your heart can heal that you will receive everything that God would promise. That not one word that God would have spoke would return back unto him void. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm talking to somebody who knows that the promise God made over you is sure, but you haven't seen it. You, you know what he said, but you are looking at something that looks dead when God would speak life. I'm, I'm talking to somebody who hasn't lost faith, but you find it funny that everybody else is walking into their promise season and you're still waiting on him to perform. I got to tell you that maybe it's close than what you think it is and and you have to identify well you're in a barren place with your truth that maybe God I laughed at you which hindered you that you are staying awake and God wants you to lay those things to rest and know that he works in your favor still on your behalf don't you up stressing about it you hinder the pregnancy of stressing about it pregnant with it and you haven't seen it all the way through maybe you avoided it by the doubt that you hold to what God said to you maybe you become come bearing in it maybe you become aborting in your nature maybe you have a miscarriage of your dream because of your doubt heart hurt stressing about it God just needs you to go to bed let your heart rest in knowing that every word that God spoke, everything that he said will come to pass. I know they're upset with you because you live through everything that they said about you that was supposed to kill you. You, you were supposed to die long time ago. See, you got to be able to understand that the one who called me is not subject to the opinion or the oppression of a man. That if God determines inside of me that it is I am to live until I see the fruition of my destiny, then no matter what attempt of attack you or the adversary comes with today, that the enemy cannot stand in my way. And try telling somebody that that you 50 learning how to drive. Tell, telling somebody that you you 95 going back to get your GED. You you telling somebody with with your record you gonna hold that kind of position at, at that job at that place that your background won't matter. It's ridiculous. You think